I'm here with artist and author Julie Piccarello, and Julie, you have a great technique for making your own art beads. So let's take a look at these beads. Love the colors you chose, too. Thank you. You're welcome. A lot of the colors that I choose are more muted colors, which I get by using a soft ecru color to tone them down rather than using white, which oh. will brighten them. So a Julie's tip secret there. tip of the day. Secret tip. Okay, how do we get started to make these gorgeous well, beads? I've mixed four colors that have a, a good deal of contrast between them. I'm going to run two of these colors at a time through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. So I'm going to end up with two two-layer strips. Okay. So you just choose two colors that have a pretty high contrast? Yeah, and I've got four like colors that I kind metallic. of like. That, yes, I love the metallics. You'll see the metallics give a great, great contrast in here. Now I've got kind of what I consider dark on the bottom, light on the top. So I'm going to do dark here and light on the top. Basically, I'm just alternating to make sure that all four of my colors are going to have a good deal of contrast between them because they are going to be stacked and layered. What I'm doing now is making sure that I have each color that was I originally started with in my stack represented four times. So you can see that I've got four colors here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to roll this out. Use your brayer. And trim it just a little bit. I like these brayers because rather than the ones that you roll from the arms, you don't put quite as much strength into it, which means you won't distort your pattern accidentally. Oh, okay. Now these pieces I'm going to put aside for now and I'm going to go ahead and put a pattern in here. I am spritzing with water. I use that as a release which will help to make sure that any tool that I put in does not get stuck on the Just clay. Just water. Water. Now I've taken an aluminum bracelet blank and I've bent it into the shape that you see here. So just a plain blank. Um, and I'm going to put this into the B, into the stack and press all the way down through the stack. So you're cutting it right in half? Right in half. But with a squiggle? With a squiggle. Then I'm going to press it back together again and use a few other little tools. I've got a square tube and I'm going to put a few little square shapes on here. And is this a case where you're pressing all the way down through if the polymer If the tool clay? allows me to go all the way down, absolutely. If I'm using a tool that's very shallow, I only press as far as the tool will let me go. And you'll just get different effects in each layer that way? And you can actually uh, re-impress in the stack oh. as you're going through here. So. Mm -hmm. Got now, it. once I've got this in place, oh, you know, one last little thing, this little tiny bead piercing pin. I like using a few little dots in here for some added interest, because right now we've got lots of big so designs going on. So you want to kind of create on. different textures on the top. Yeah. Now this is where I'm using my very sharp tissue blade, and I'm slicing through the stack. And each that. layer that I take off is going to have a representation of whatever I pattern I put in there. Wow. So I usually get four to six slices off of each stack. What I'm going to do now is show that I have taken over here some slightly larger uh, slices off of a stack. And I'm going to do what we call the lazy river, which is I've taken a piece of clay, and I've used my uh, threaded bolt just to run over the clay in one direction and then in another direction. So then you're just I use, creating the textured background. Exactly. And then I've used a little bit of metallic pulver or powder to highlight my clay, mm -hmm. as shown here. And then I'm going to take one of my slices and set this on here. So what I'm doing is making that river, that winding lazy river, highlighted with the metallic particles Oh, that yeah. are inside. It makes it very dimensional. It very much does. And now this piece I would just add some additional clay to the backing to build the bead up to be the size that I wanted. I would use a little bit of my deli paper here to um, cover this and then usually brayer over it just to flatten that down a little bit. And then you can use a cutter to cut a shape out of here or you can use your tissue blade to freehand it into any shape you'd like. And then you're going to bake this. And this goes in the oven at the manufacturer's recommended time. Mm -hmm. um, I rarely will drill my beads before I put them in the oven. But if you are concerned about that, you can use a little bead piercing pin. And you can use this to, to make yourself a little bit of a guide hole as you're going through your bead. So when you come out it's a, of the oven, it's a little bit easier. So let's take a look at this finished piece again. Mm -hmm. So once this comes out of the oven, it, you're going to drill it or add a bale? The or best do part other. is the sanding and buffing. So oh, okay. typically you'll go through and take your wet dry sandpaper and sand for a couple grits, four, six, eight hundred maybe. Then take a soft cotton cloth and buff it unless you have a bench lathe. Then you can also do something where either you drill through like we discussed or you can put just a clay bale on the back so that you can string it with, um, you know, cord or Yeah, so if you wanted to wanted. add this clay bale to the back, mm -hmm. you would add this with some liquid 
polymer clay and then bake it again? It depends. If I wanted to cut a little bale out, say for example I was going to do this, I've got raw clay here, I could actually put raw clay to raw clay with a piece of paper in the center to keep that from adhering, yeah. and that mm -hmm. would work just fine. Bake it if just this like is that. cured, and I'm putting this on afterwards, then yes, I would want to put paper there and use a little bit of liquid clay in between. What a great way to make your own beads. Thank you so Very much, simple. Julie. You're so welcome. And we'll be right back. Linda Hartung is going to show us a necklace technique.